Hello, boys. We were gonna be looking at Casper we met today. Jean Raymond Claude was a 67 gang member. I'm sure some of you recently saw his son, who's in the hip hop industry, a rapper, I believe, and uh, he speaks about his father's disappearance. If we look here, Claude was 37 years old, and the last time he was seen was on April 7, 2nd in Laval. So he disappeared, I think, 2014, or was it 2015? Look what it says about his history. At the end of the years of the 90s, Jean Raymond Claude and his brother, Guy Robert, were part of the 67 gang, the redoubtable gang of Blue Allegiance, who was directed by, or co-directed by, Ducarm Joseph. This last one was assassinated in Saint-Michel in 2014, and he was long suspected of being part of Rizzuto Sons' assassination which led to reprisals, obviously. But in the beginning of the years 2000, jean Raymond Claude and Ducam Joseph had multiplied their misgivings towards other criminalized groups. Note, Ducam Joseph was already doing that decade, a decade ago, or half a decade ago at least. If you watched our previous video, I mentioned that briefly, without mentioning it, with photos. Well, in the beginning of the years 2000, they were back at it, it seems, according to this article. But something happened uh, between Raymond Claude and Ducam Joseph, the article states. There was internal beef, it seems. And the trio no longer worked together for a couple of years. We do know that we spoke about this English black gentleman. You know, the Anglo, he is an Anglo side. More, he had more connections in the Southwest, but he's not from the Southwest from my understanding. I forget his name. Remember the guy who was knocking at the Russian millionaire's door and it was filmed and he had the COQ shirt on him? Funny enough, he can't join, but he'll wear the COQ shirt to discriminate on you. I'll never understand this. But you know what? It's all about, look at me. Yes, give me some, give me some opportunities. It comes down to this. Be my supplier, please. I'll do anything. Give me a contract. Note, they very rarely do anything out of their own merit, such as innovate and try to get their own supply. Never. They never do that. They're always under the wing, if you know what I'm saying. Which does contrast with British Columbia, where it's the wild, wild west. But even there, they're trying to bring it under the banner of one. You know who. What are his charges for Jean Raymond Claude in his past? Violence, it says, uh, possession of arms, stupefiers, but he was never condemned to a federal sentence, which means more than two years over here. His sentence was one of 30 days pronounced in May of 2014 for non-respect of his conditions, I'm assuming bail conditions. The police always suspected Jean Raymond Claude, a defunct of the 67 gang, to have been behind the murders of a barman on August 31st of 2002, in the angles of, or the intersections of Saint Laurent and Maisonneuve. Those who know by now, I repeat this all the time, Saint Laurent would be a very coveted area where there's bars, the nightlife. And it's been that way before in another lifetime. And it will continue to be so. Who the victim was? It was Roger Cajuste, 32 years old. He left this earth. What happened? He was on board of his Mercedes, which had the colors or the banners of the club he worked at. Which club? Le Playgirl. And it was opening its door that evening because he was going to start his shift, I imagine, as the doorman. But instead, he was crippled with bullets as he was seating inside his own. So they assassinated him. Classic marking of an assassination, isn't it? We've seen that the leader of the Boga street gang was himself oft sitting in his vehicle in a parking lot. It's the best ambush spot. We saw that, unfortunately, we saw that, uh, what's her name, Claudia Yacono was parking her vehicle or getting, either she was parking in or she was about to park out, but they ambushed, ambushed her in her vehicle. Look at this. There you have it. A little correction from my previous video, because I did it off the top of my memory. You guys know I don't have the best memory all the time. But here's a confirmation. We are here. This is purely coincidental that it's in this article. It says that sources indicate to La Presse that Ducarme and Jean-Raymond Claude were implicated in a 
robbery at the expense of the bikers in the end of 1990 or the, the beginning of 1999 the year 19 the suspects would have later bought themselves a mercedes with that money from their robbery but the bikers found them and crippled with bullets the new vehicle on the highway does not sound like del balzo and the assassination the outright outlandish assassination or attempted assassination of uh, Leonardo Rizzuto, probably, possibly paid by Del Balzo. Who else would it have been? Yet, we heard Maria Murani recently say, well, if you listen to, between the lines of what she was saying in the video I translated it, she makes it, she makes her hypothesis that it was actually the bikers who tried to off Leonardo Rizzuto. It didn't work, because remember, they were close, they were close with Del Balzo. So, either they green-lighted it, or they participated in it, but she thinks they had a first part participation in this. They didn't do it themselves, but they command. I say, ah, they sponsored it. That's what she believes. And after the fact, it didn't work out, and the victim was alive. So now they're never going to be able to get him, and they just ruined a big relationship because of that. They're screwed. They decided, you know what? It will be much easier to get rid of Del Balzo now. Damage control. That's her hypothesis. But I'm just throwing it in there. You notice the highway shooting. It's interesting to try to off someone in the middle of a highway. I always wonder, now it's happening. We see that recently, that would be a second time, right? I wonder if that's a marriage of convenience, as in, it, get him now. There's no better moment. It's now or never. They caught him on the highway. Or more like, let's send a message to everyone. Let's not keep this secret. Let's go with a bang. We know that... Rabbi Al-Khalil did something in the middle of Ontario. Uh, was it Toronto? Little, little Italy, Italy, was it? Or Little Portugal? I cannot remember. We know that he did something there right in the open for no other reason that people will find the victim. Because usually, you don't want to get hit with a charge. Why would you do something so live? You have to be make sure that the body's hidden, the body can't be found. That's even better for you. You, have to, if, if you do have to ask yourself, there's only two options convenience no choice type of thing it's now or never he's impossible to get or we want everyone to see it but these two coming back to the story uh Ducam joseph 67 gang leader and jean raymond claude his lieutenant robbed the hell's angels in the 1990s and now we have end of 1990s and they used that money to buy a mercedes i had a friend once upon a time he's no longer on this earth he, he was a childhood friend of mine, but he's gone. He did something similar. He, the thing is, he did it to, to the same type of things. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to help nobody do nothing. So when there's money involved, people lose their minds, man. But the thing is, what people need to understand, when you rob someone else, you give them no choice but to off you because that other person is now in trouble too. His life's on the line. You should. Robbing someone else is a scummy move. Very scummy. You've practically murdered that person you robbed. Friend? Of course, that person gets his revenge. He has no choice. What do you think happens to him, too? You ruined his life because now he, he gets to serve time in the penitentiary. The, I knew the other dude who did it. He's... he's I don't know how long they, I think he had minimums going to be no less than 15. But looking at the Canada, I was expecting that guy to come out probably around now. But now that I think about it with the Canada stuff, you'll be amazed. In fact, I'm going to prove it to you. That guy, I didn't even check. He's probably out now based on all the evidence that we have. I'll show it to you with a Hells Angel who was sentenced to 28 years. You'll be dumbfounded when I show you how much he really did in Canada. So they had an agreement, it says here, to reimburse the money that was stolen. And it was concluded. They would reimburse the Hells Angels or whichever biker that they robbed. Mais l'un des acteurs de cette affaire digne, but one of the actors of this act that was, how could you say, like a movie in the Far West, was assassinated in Haiti afterwards. According to our information, Jean Raymond Claude, alias Jean Jean, was very close to Joseph Galeb, a businessman linked to the mafia and to the Hells Angels, who was offed in Laval in November of 2004. And the name, whose name was already being circulated in the investigation for the attempted murder against 
journalist Michel Auger. Remember journalist Michel Auger? He was the one that the Hells Angels put a hit on Mambouche did. And they went in the parking lot. They shot the guy. He survived. They wanted him to stop reporting. They wanted to turn Canada into, sorry to say, Mexico. Those degenerates. How did that turn out? How did that turn out? You can't take our freedom, boys. You try to take our freedom, even the population will turn against you without question. Because no one wants to live like they live in Mexico. And now the article continues with, Claude was equally a friend of gang member Thierry Beaubrun. Now, some of you remember Thierry Beaubrun. If you've watched some of our uh, analysis, one of our uh, reports, I showed something briefly about him. It was even mentioned in the Montreal Mafia saga. Remember you heard, we heard a quote from, uh, well, I did the voice, try to imitate it a little bit. It was, his name doesn't come to mind. I think it was Arcady. I can't remember. I think it was Arcady. Remember he was discussing about the blacks. Remember that? There was a shooting in Mumba in Laval. Uh, underling or associate or an employee a bodyguard type, a big type of fella, got into an argument with for over a girl or something like that. My memory fails me, but he had an argument over a girl with Thierry Beaubrun, a crip. You see, this was 20 years ago. This is part of Montreal mob history. Why? You're going to say, well, that's insignificant. Yeah, they had a little scuffle at the bar, but it was like a movie. Thierry Beaubrun shot the guy. The guy died, unfortunately. And when he left, someone else got him. And on the scene, guess who was there on the scene? None other than Giordano. Of course, no one was ever charged for the murders. But as you see here, Jean Raymond Claude was friends with Thierry Beaubrun, who also is gone right now. Oh, look what it says. With a rising star of the mafia, Mike Lapola, in Mumbai in March of 2005. And we heard Arcady say, look... They got one of ours, we got one of theirs. There's no point to turning this into a war. Like, we need to calm things down. They were trying to, he was trying to keep this moderate. All right, so that was Jean Claude, or Jean Raymond Claude. All okay. right, Forger, that's an old story. Great. So what? Well, 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 look at this. Remember, he disappeared, right? No one heard from him. It was one of the mysteries of the underworld. Well, the investigation has been reopened eight years later. I have not read this article. Let's check it out together, man. Les enquêteurs de la Sûreté du Québec se sont déplacés. So the investigators on Tuesday morning moved to the sector of de la Baie Carillon à Saint-André d'Argenteuil. Yeah, these are funny names, man. To attempt to find traces of evidence related to his disappearance almost eight years ago, the influential gang. Now, of course, it resumes what happened. On the 2nd of April, 2015, jean Raymond Claude, 37, went to a restaurant in Centropolis, Centropolis in Laval. I th I'm not sure. I, I, I think this is the commercial. Uh, we call it commercial. The, the mall, I believe. I could be wrong. Could be could be something else. But the name t tells me something like that. Funny enough, I live in Laval, but I don't, there's no, I don't go around too much. I'm not a fan of malls. And he was also, he also left, il a ensuite, non, so he went to see someone, I guess, in the mall, in the company of another man, for a meeting, somewhere public, and he left on board of a Volkswagen Jetta, white color, and he was never seen since. He was led to his death. An analysis of the DNA confirmed that a bone of the disappeared man was found in Rivière des Outaouais in the sector of Saint-André d'Argenteuil, in the Laurentides, in, in the summer of 2020. Wow, so imagine that. Crazy, isn't it? Six years later, they found the DNA of the man. The disappearance is always considered a non-resolved disappearance, even if Jean Raymond Claude is presumed dead. The investigators of the division, the investigators of the Division of Investigations on Murders, and disappearances, went to Becarillon, hoping to find the remains of the defunct in order to advance their investigation and perform an autopsy. Much there. So he's asking people for information. So apparently they opened a mobile command center close to 5465 
de la rue Grand Maison at Saint Placid. That's a funny ass name. An ancient of the 67. Now they're giving us a rundown, which we already did. Yes, we just, we already saw that. Yes, his friend was assassinated. That too. I'm trying to make sure we didn't miss out on anything. Yes, we got the Lapola story here. We know Joseph Ducamp finally got assassinated in 2014. So I don't know the reason why he got off. But Joseph Ducamp got off in 2014. And this guy disappeared in what, 2014 or 2015? It, on a cursory, cursory level, not having the knowledge. Because I, probably I read about it before. I totally forgot. You know me and my memory. But just on top of my head, his leader disappeared for being suspected in the Rizzuto son slaying. Wouldn't it be far-fetched to believe that his lieutenant, who would also be a threat to their organization, right? To the enemies, was also off the Biso. But I believe he may have made a mistake. There was another st story that comes to my head. I don't know it. I can't remember. But I believe there's a chance that he disappeared because of a mistake that was made or something like that. And he was the one held responsible. Now, don't quote me on this. This is purely off my memory. My messed up memory. However... On a cursory level, one would probably assume, look, someone like me who doesn't have the good memory would assume this guy. Well, you know, your leader talked to off the Rizuro son. What do you think is going to happen to your lieutenant? Crazy. That's my friend. Is That's why, my friends, you don't want to be part of it. You want to go to work. The years these guys spent in jail, well, actually, not in Canada, it's probably worth it. <laughs> guys, I wanted to show you this. Casper Wime. What does it say here? Sentenced to 27 years in 2014. 27 years, probably related to murder. Doesn't seem to mention this, my friends. I'm looking, but it had something to do with the Operation Shark, you see, 2009. After a break of proceedings, Jean-Claude Jean Jean Chamon handed down a sentence of two years for a series of charges, including conspiracy, money laundering, and gangsterism, based on evidence uncovered. Okay, what did I want to show you guys? Let me just double check. Marvin Casper Wiemet is serving a sentence he ser uh, serving a sentence he received after he pled guilty to charges, right? We know that one, Shark you see, we just mentioned that. So he's already released. I think he's already released. This is a little bit old. Well no, maybe if in a few days after this. I don't remember. But look at this. Statutory release date of the fourteenth year sentence he received. I thought it was twenty seven. Now it says fourteen. And he will be serving it at the rest at his halfway house. To be tell you the truth, I was. this is not the one that I was looking at. This was not the article I was looking at. There's another article fresh from La Presse. And it clearly showed you he, he was sentenced on 2014. And he's being released in 2023. Is that even 10 years, man? That's not even 10 years. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. It says 27 here. Dude did like not. It says, wow. From what I could tell, it made no sense. He did like nine. But they keep saying he served 13, 14. Then I have to remember that there's times served and a half. That changes every pretty mind-blowing stuff. Yeah, it, was my, it, it defeats my example. I was going to say you're better off not serving any time and working at McDonald's and you'd make more. But in Canada, you look like you could actually get away with it. It's actually semi-worth it, it seems. Really. <laughs> what can you do? What can? Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. God bless you. Violi, that was Bologna, sharing his authority as Rizzuto was aiming for a bigger piece of the pie. The underling of the group had Sicilian members, notably the Rizzutos and the Caruanas. Well, one must understand the rigid hierarchies of interfamilial relations. At the heart of the Mafia is blood. And sometimes all you need is a battery to proceed. My friends, say hello to the veto. What's the tip of the iceberg? What does that mean? Usually it means you open Pandora's box and you write the agreement. The agent must supply information, and he means information related to DeVito, DeMarco, and four Montreal area bars with DeVito. And so they agree to meet later that year, around August. And not hearing back, the undercover agent calls Nicolo by phone and asks him, when are we setting up the meeting? Wonder if Vito or Leonardo grew up happy. That's the million dollar question. Only they can answer that.
What we know, however, is life evidence suggests he was a troubled man. And sometimes the eyes are the portal to the soul. He knew the moment he got off that plane, they would be hunting him. But he would be hunting them with pleasure, for they are more complex when you mix greed. And he was a thorn in the Rizzuto clan, because he was at various places at any given moment, even taking risks at the Montreal airport. Who do you think they came charging for? Openly. And so the sabotaging began in a systematic fashion. It only time will tell, Habibi.